Hey everyone, it's Kara here from Boho Berry, and I am finally back after almost a week with no voice. So I do apologize if I have a little scratch here and there um, or have to cough a little bit, but I finally think I'm pretty much completely on the mend. So I am super excited to be back with today's video. I have been teasing it for a little while now, but this is gonna cover my entire fountain pen collection. And I get so many questions about fountain pens every time I use one or every time I show it off. So I've actually decided to turn this into a series here on YouTube. So in addition to just showing you my collection today and kind of sharing my love of fountain pens with you, I'm gonna have a series coming up where once a week throughout the month of January, I am going to be posting a brand new video answering all of your fountain pen questions. So earlier last week on Instagram and on Facebook, I asked you to submit any and all questions you had about fountain pens, and I was flooded with over 200 entirely different questions about fountain pens from you guys. So that's why I decided to turn it into a series and I'm gonna be focusing on different categories like pens for beginners, how to clean and take care of your pens, troubleshooting, different types of inks, different types of nibs, and all of those good things. So today is just gonna be a general overview of my fountain pen collection and then we're gonna get into the nitty gritty starting next week in video two of this series. All right, so this case that I have right here is a Monteverde pen case. It holds 36 pens and I got it from the Goulet Pen Company. And I currently have every single one of my fountain pens, all the pens that I own in this case so that I can show them off for you. All right, so I'm gonna open her up and let's get started. Okay, so as you can see, this case is huge. I don't even think I can fit the whole case in this screen um, but this gives you kind of an idea of how many pens I have this case holds 36 I'm not quite full I have one two three four five six slots left so I actually have 30 pens and one of the most common questions that I got over on Instagram especially was why so many fountain pens so for me fountain pens, and I just started collecting fountain pens back in 2015, but I really got into fountain pens after seeing a couple of them on Instagram, and then that led me to the Goulet Pens YouTube channel where Brian Goulet teaches all about fountain pens. He has a great fountain pen 101 series for those of you who are curious about how to get started. But I basically fell in love almost right away. First of all, they're beautiful, and then I ordered my very first fountain pen. And my very first fountain pen was this one right here. It's a Pilot Metropolitan. This is one of the cheapest like entry level fountain pens that you can get that's not like a disposable pen. But this is the Pilot Metropolitan Animal Print Collection. And this was the first pen I ordered. I ordered it off of Amazon for $15. And I tried it out and I fell in love with the way that it writes. This is a fine nib, and I'll be going into detail in those future videos about different nibs and how they write differently and how they handle different kinds of inks, etc. But for now, let's just suffice it to say that when I first wrote with this pen right here, I knew that I was hooked on fountain pens. It was the smoothest writing experience I'd ever had, and I knew right away that I wanted more. So I actually went out right after that and I got my second Metropolitan which is this turquoise this is their retro pop collection and I believe this one is a medium yes this is a medium nib so I went a little bit larger on the nib for this one but I did find that the medium wrote a little bit too thick for my liking I preferred the fine nib on the pilot Metropolitan mainly because I always write in my bullet journal and those of you who have the dot grid bullet journals, those are five millimeters spaced apart. So you kind of have to write small if you wanna stay within the lines in your lug germ, so, or in any other dot grid notebook. So I did find the medium a bit too thick, so that's when I realized, okay, I really like finer nibs. After that, I really knew that I was hooked, and we were getting close to my birthday in 2015. It was like early November, and my husband asked me what I wanted for my birthday. And I had been researching different fountain pens, and I had my dream pen 
in mind and I put it on my wish list and lo and behold, my husband got it for me for my birthday. So I went from $15 Pilot Metropolitans to this Visconti. This is a Van Gogh. They have a whole series of different Van Gogh paintings. This one is irises, which I don't know if that'll zoom so you can see it says irises right there. And this is also a fine nib, but being an Italian nib, it's actually writes a little bit thicker than the Pilot fine. It was actually more like the Pilot medium. So I love this pen, but I only use it when I wanna write a little bit larger. One of the things that I love about this Visconti is that it has a magnetic cap. So instead of having to either click on the cap or screw on the cap, all you have to do is just barely put it on and it closes automatically. So you don't have to worry about it. All right. Um, while I am here in my Visconti's, I do have another Van Gogh, which is sitting right next to it. And this I actually picked up at the DC Fountain Pen Show this past October in 2017 and I knew that I wanted the portrait blue, Van Gogh's self-portrait. I just loved the colors in the painting and I knew that I would love this pen as well. And I really wanted to pick this one out in person. And the reason for that is each one of these pens is slightly different. So if you were to get a Visconti Van Gogh portrait blue, it would not look just like this one. So by being there in person, I was actually able to, to pick from a few different pens and get exactly the color variation on the barrel and on the cap that I wanted. I believe this one is a fine as well. Nope, this one is actually a medium. And one thing that I love doing when I get multiple pens of the same type, for example, I have a couple of Twisby Diamond 580s. I have a few Lamy <laughs> Safaris and All Stars. I have a couple of Edison Premier Nouveau fountain pens. And then of course I have quite a few Pilot Vanishing Points. I really like to switch up the size of the nib that I get on each pen. So I already had the fine in this Visconti Van Gogh. So I decided to go with the medium in this one. Same when I had the Pilot Metropolitan, I had the fine to start, I decided to get a medium as well. All right, so after my husband got me this Visconti for my birthday, it was like the floodgates unleashed. I truly and utterly fell in love with fountain pens and I always had my eye on what was the next thing that was coming out or something that I would truly love. And at this point, I can't quite remember the order in which I got everything, so I'll probably skip around a little bit, but I do think that it was around that time that I picked up this Keras Customs Fountain K, and I fell in love with this brand because they're actually made here in the USA, in Arizona, and they're just a really good, sturdy quality pen. These are like a heavy metal. This one is aluminum, and you can actually kind of create your own pen, so to speak, when you order these. So you can order the body separately, the cap separately, you can order the grip section and then the nib that you would like in your pen. It looks like I've got a little bit of rust here, which I'll have to clean off. I have not used this pen in a really long time, uh, but this is the Keras Customs Fountain K. I have a brown aluminum body along with a copper grip. Now this grip was a bright, bright copper, sort of like this pen right here when I got it, but I've used it so much that it's got this gorgeous patina on it. And that was kind of my intention in mixing the brown aluminum with the copper grip. I thought it would look really pretty. And this is a fine nib. And you'll actually notice a lot of my nibs are fine or extra fine, because that's just what I love to write with. All right, so that was my Fountain K. And now is where I'm really gonna start to skip around because I cannot for the life of me remember what pen was next. So I'm just gonna go back to the top here to my Lamy's. So I have four different Lamy pens. These are all a variation. So this is the Safari, which is a plastic bodied pen. And this has a medium nib. This is actually the petrol version. This was a limited edition I believe from 2017. So I actually ordered a couple of these, one for me and one for my husband. So we actually have two of these in my house. 
Up next is my Lamy LX. Now this is kind of a souped up version of a Lamy Safari. So it's a metal body instead of the plastic body. And then in this one, I have a fine nib. And this is another like special edition. The LX comes in rose gold, gold, and silver. And I, being the lover of rose gold that I am, had to go with the rose gold version. Another limited edition is this Lamy All Star. Um, All Star, again, is a metal version of the Lamy Safari. And this is the Pacific Blue. And this one has an extra fine nib on it. So I have medium, fine, extra fine. And then one last Safari, this is the Graphite. This one is available all the time, another all-star, and it also has an extra fine nib on it. And one thing with the Lamy's, um, a lot of people are can either go one way or another on how the Lamy's feel in the hand. And I don't know if you can see this super well, but it kind of has a triangular barrel. So it kind of forces you to hold the pen in a very specific way. I actually really like how it forces me to hold the pen. It forces me to hold the pen correctly. So I actually really enjoy writing with these because I always know that I'm holding it the way that I should be, if that makes sense. <laughs> All right, let's see, where should we go next? All right, up next, I'm gonna cover this little guy right here. This is my Noodler's Ahab. And you can see that it looks a little cloudy inside. This is a demonstrator pen that I left inked up and have not completely cleaned out. So it's a little gunked up and dried out in there. So I really need to maybe take this apart and soak it a little bit and get it all cleaned up. But this was my very first flex pen. So this has a nib that it actually flexes as you write um, to create like thicker downstrokes and thinner upstrokes as you would with calligraphy. So I really enjoy using this from time to time when I really want to get that uh, calligraphic effect. So that's really fun. And this is a relatively cheap pen, I believe. I want to say it was around $20. Uh, and these are notoriously finicky pens. So you may have to kind of tinker with them to get them to work right. There's another instance where Goulet Pens has some great videos on how to kind of tinker with and make sure that your Noodler's Ahab Flex are set up correctly. Up next, I actually have two turquoise Regal pens. These are from the Regal Pen Company. And I actually got these when I was at the Atlanta Pen Show in 2016. Uh, Regal had a booth there, and y'all know how much I love teal, and of course I just had to snag these up. These are both metal body pens. Uh, I'm not sure on the nib size. Let's see. They are 18 karat gold nibs. I'm not sure on the nib size. I want to say that they're both medium. Yeah, they're not labeled on there, but they are both 18 karat gold. And I'm not sure on the exact names of these pens either. I'll have to look it up and I'll make sure I add it to the notes below for you all so you can check them out. But these are just really cute and nice sized pens. You'll notice that they're a lot thinner than most of my other pens. So these are really fun and kind of dainty to write with. I really like them. All right, up next, I'm gonna move over to my Twisbees, which are probably one of my favorite brands of fountain pen. And one of the main reasons I love them so much is that they're super affordable. And to me, they have always been great writers. Unfortunately, every single Twisby that I have, except for this Vac Mini, is a limited edition that is no longer available. So I'm gonna show these to you, but with the caveat that you may not be able to find them. You might be able to find them being resold online somewhere, but you may not be able to find them just by going to your traditional retailer. So the first one I have is actually a Twisby Classic in turquoise. This is a piston filling pen, and this is actually, I think this might be the only pen Okay, there's two. One of the only pens in my case that I have never inked up. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. So this is the Twisby Classic and it has an extra fine nib. And I've never 
100% been a fan of the style of the Twisby Classic, but when I saw it in turquoise, I absolutely had to have it. All right, let's see. Up next is a Twisby Diamond 580. This is a black and rose gold limited edition. Uh, I used this pen religiously in my bullet journal filled with Noodler's black ink for months and months and months and months and months. And I absolutely love this pen. It's an extra fine rose gold nib, love that. And one thing that I love about these Diamond 580, the Eco, and the Vac Mini is that they hold a ton of ink. And as you can see inside, there's a little piston here. And instead of having a converter inside, you actually fill the ink up into the actual body of the pen. So you're able to hold a lot more ink at a time and you have to clean and re-ink way less frequently than you would with a converter. All right, so that is my first Diamond 580. I have another Twisby Diamond 580. This is another limited edition or special edition. This is in Christmas green. Again, I believe this is a extra fine. Nope, this is a fine, fine nib. And I have it currently inked up with Noodler's Black. I got a little nib creep going on there. Oh no. Anyway, this is the pen that I keep right now in my bullet journal. So anytime I wanna write in cursive in black, I tend to find that I like writing in cursive with fountain pens better than with felt tip pens. So if I'm gonna write in cursive in my bullet journal, I usually pull this out and get to writing. So that's currently inked up with Noodler's Black. After that, we have my Twisby Eco, and this is also in turquoise. This is another pen that I probably would not have purchased the regular Eco, but when they came out with it in the turquoise, I knew that I had to have it. And I currently have this inked up with Pilot Eroshizuku Kujaku, which is one of my favorite teal inks. And this is, oh no, it doesn't say. I want to say that this is an extra fine. I'll have to look at my spreadsheet here in a little bit. Um, no, that's a lie. This is a medium. <laughs> I just remembered when I purchased, I purchased this Eco and the Vac Mini at the same time, and I decided I was gonna branch out from my fine and extra fine nibs and try out a couple of medium nibs. So this is a medium nib. And then my Vac Mini, which is almost out of ink. This is inked up with Noodler's Apache Sunset. It's a gorgeous orangish yellow ink. And this is also a medium nib and it's a clear demonstrator. It's also one of my only vacuum filling pens, which is a totally different mechanism. I'll cover that in the filling, inking, and cleaning video for y'all for sure. All right, so that is all of my Twisbees. So anyone who's keeping a tally, I have five Twisbees, four Lamis, and four Viscontis, and four Pilot Vanishing Points. So you can probably tell kind of what my favorite <laughs> types of pens are so far. All right, up next we have a Kaveco. This is a Skyline Sport, and I believe the color is called Mint. Um, but this is it, like this tiny little pocket pen. It's so stinking cute. Uh, but when you turn it around and post it, it's just the right length to write with. Now, I actually haven't written with this one yet. It's an extra fine, and I do believe that I have an ink cartridge hanging out in here. Just waiting. Yep. So this takes an ink cartridge. I believe there are converters that you can put in this too, but this one came with a little blue cartridge. I just haven't put it in or inked it up yet. So that is my little Kaveco. Super cute little pen. All right, so now let's move on to this side down here and we'll talk about my vanishing points for a little bit. Now, the very first vanishing point that I got was this yellow one right here. And what I love about the vanishing point is that it's a retractable pen. So it's a click mechanism, absolutely love that. This one right here is an extra fine nib. And the great thing about the vanishing point is that it's so easy when you're on the go 
just to pull it out of your bag, click it open and get to writing versus pulling a pen out, having to unscrew the cap, putting the cap safely somewhere in case you can't post it and hoping you don't lose it, making sure the cap doesn't roll away. And then when you're done having to put the cap back on and then back into your bag. So this solves a lot of those problems and it does have a little clip here. So you can clip it into your shirt pocket or the pocket of your bag or whatever that may be. So the first one that I got is this yellow one here. The second one, this is another limited edition that is not available anywhere else at the moment. Uh, this is the Twilight, and I wanna say it was the special edition from 2000, yes, 2015. This is number 533 out of 2015 pens made that year. Again, it's the exact same mechanism. This one is a medium nib, and let's see, which one should I go to next? Let's go to, this is actually a Pilot Decimo, which is a thinner version of the Vanishing Point. So you'll see when I hold them up next to each other that this one is much slimmer. They're the same in length. They actually hold the same converters and the same pen unit inside. So I can actually swap units from this pen to this pen, even though this one's slightly thinner. Uh, this Decimo is the champagne color. I got it when they first came out. I just fell in love with that color. Again, it's that nice little retractable nib. And this one is an extra fine. All right, and then last but not least on my vanishing points is this one right here. And this is the pride of my <laughs> vanishing point collection. This is the Galaxy Rodden. So this is a black resin that is inlaid with little pieces of abalone or abalone. I'm not sure how to say that, but it's in this adorable galaxy pattern and it's just, it's stunningly gorgeous. I love, I fell in love with this pen from the moment that I saw it. I knew I had to have it and I saved up for it. And then the nib in this one is another medium nib. All right, so that covers my vanishing points. Uh, up next, I'm going to talk a little bit about these two beauties. These are from the Edison Pen Company. These are also U.S. made, and these are both limited edition that cannot be <laughs> purchased anywhere anymore. So this one is the Spring Edition from 2016, commonly referred to as the Unicorn Barf Pen, but I fell in love with this pattern when I saw it, and actually the Goulet sent me this as a gift after uh, hanging out with them in Atlanta at the pen show and at the planner con there in 2016. So I thought that was super sweet of them. Love, love this pen and they know me super well. So they sent me an extra fine in this one. And I absolutely love the feel of these pens. You can post them if you like. I prefer to leave them unposted, but they're just beautiful writers and beautiful pens. And the second one that I have is the Sea Glass. And this is the spring edition of 2017. Uh, there's something about, something about the spring editions that have just been really getting me on these, but I decided to go with a fine nib since I already had the extra fine in the other one. All right, after that, I'm gonna hop back over to this side and talk about my other two Viscontis. We already covered my Van Goghs, uh, but then we have my Visconti Homo Sapiens, which is one of my favorite pens. This was my holy grail pen for a really long time. Uh, this pen, this is the MIDI version. You'll notice it's a little bit shorter than the others. And this is actually made out of lava rock, which I thought was so, so cool. And one of my favorite features about this pen is the hook lock cap. I hope I'm saying that right. Hook lock safe, no, hook lock cap <laughs> mechanism. So I'll try to get a close up of this, but when I push the pen together and twist, it unlocks. So I don't know if you can see those little grooves in there, but there are little notches in the cap that hook into those grooves. So all you have to do is just give it one tiny little twist and it locks or unlocks. So I really, really love that. This one here is a fine nib and this is another vacuum filling pen and definitely, definitely one of my favorite pens here. My other Visconti that I own is the Visconti Brunelleschi. 
This was a limited edition pen. I think they only made, let's see, I think it's numbered. They only made 388. I don't know if the camera will pick that up. 388 of these. This is number 34. And I basically just fell in love with the terracotta look with the rose gold accents. I'm a sucker again for rose gold. And when I saw this, I knew that I had to have it. So I reached out to the Goulets right after I saw this on their, I believe it was on their Instagram stories. And I was like, yes, I need this pen in my life. So it has that same hook lock cap mechanism, which is really nifty. And then this one is also a fine, look at the size of that nib. It's gigantic. I just love it. This is such a fun, like beautiful, beautiful pen. All right, and finally, we're getting to the last last three over here. Um, this is my Stipula Rainbow Etruria 88 Prisma. <laughs> I think I'm saying that all correctly. It's the longest name of a pen in the history of pens, but it's made by Stipula, an Italian company, and this is another limited edition. There were only 88 of these made, and I have number two. I don't know if you can pick that up but what really drew me to this pen was of course the beautiful rainbow resin body is just stunningly gorgeous and then it also has a titanium flex or t flex nib so like i was talking about with the ahab that has the flex nib for calligraphy where you can get good line variation with this pen uh, this has that same type of titanium flex nib so it's awesome and i do have this one inked up currently i think the ink in it is schaefer script green but hands down one of my favorite purchases of 2017 this pen is just stunningly beautiful it's huge don't get me wrong this is probably one of the largest pens that i own if not i think it might be the largest the largest pen that i own but i do love it it's really it's beautiful. It was limited edition, which again, gets me every time. Um, and I knew I had to have it. So there's that one. Uh, up next, I have this beautiful, this is my first ever Pelican brand fountain pen. It's a Pelican M805. This is made in Germany. And this is the Ocean Swirl is what it's called. And I do believe this is also a limited edition. Uh, this one I decided to go with a fine nib and it really, it writes like a dream. I absolutely love it. I have it inked up right now with Noodler's Blue and Black, which I thought was kind of appropriate because the body of this pen is kind of a blue and black kind of marbled shimmery look to it. So I absolutely love this pen. Love it inked up, love how it writes, gorgeous, wonderful. All right, my very last fountain pen is my Montegrappa Copper Mule. Now I got this pen when I was at the Atlanta Pen Show in 2016, and it did not have this engraving on it at the time, but when I bought it, it was just a beautiful, beautiful copper. It did not have any of this kind of wear and tear like patina on it. It did come with a polishing cloth so you can keep it nice and coppery looking. However, I decided I really liked the patina look, like that kind of aging over time look that copper gets. So I decided to just let it patina. And I love this pen, it's a screw cap. Um, I can't remember the nib size on this one. I want to say it's probably, oh no, there's the M. It is a medium. So this is a medium nib. Uh, it's a very heavy pen because it's all metal, but I really, really enjoy it. Some people talk about these threads kind of hurting or digging in while they write. I've never really had that problem since I tend to hold it a little closer to the nib, not way up here. But if that's something that bothers you, that might be something to think about. Um, but this pen, the reason I love it so, so much, I mean, first of all, just a gorgeous pen, but the main reason I love it so much is I took it with me to the DC Pen Show a few months ago, back in October, where I got to meet Jake Weidman, and Jake Weidman is the youngest master penman in the world. I've looked up to him for a very, very long time. I love his writing. I love his art. And I was really, really looking forward to meeting him because I knew he was gonna be there. And he was so, so nice, super down to earth. And he actually spent the time to engrave 
my pen for me with my name. So you can see here, beautiful, beautiful handwriting, beautiful craftsmanship, and I think it just looks amazing with that patina on the pen as well. So this one's very, very special to me, even though it's definitely not the most expensive pen that I own, um, it's definitely the most unique because of this engraving on it, and I will cherish it forever and ever. Okay, <laughs> this is gonna be the longest video ever. All right, so I have one more pen in here that you may have noticed that I kind of glossed over. Uh, this is actually a Platinum Maquille brush pen. And I ordered this from Goulet Pens a couple of months ago because I wanted to give it a try. It's not technically a fountain pen. It's actually has brush bristles in the tip. And then when you open it up, it has an ink converter just like a fountain pen. So I can technically fill this up with any of my fountain pen inks and paint or do brush lettering with this pen using my fountain pen inks. So I have it stored in here just because I haven't filled it up yet or gotten there yet. But just in case you were wondering what that was, it's a little brush pen. All right, y'all, that is it. That is my entire fountain pen collection. And as I'm done recording this, it looks like we're at 39 minutes. I'm hoping with editing, I'll be able to bring that down a little bit, but I do wanna say thank you. I know so many of you are waiting for this video for so, so long. And I do promise I have all of your questions that you've been asking over on Facebook and Instagram. I've been organizing them and we're gonna have a video each and every week during the month of January answering all of those questions for you. So I'm gonna be covering storage, organization, cleaning, maintenance, troubleshooting, all my different inks, nib sizes, what different nibs I like to use for what things, what are my go-to like workhorse pens, all of those questions are gonna be answered and I cannot wait. So I wanna say if you do have any questions that you'd like me to cover, be sure to drop those in the comments below. I'm still compiling them all and I'll still be adding more information to those upcoming videos as you ask more questions. All right, y'all, I hope you have an amazing rest of your week and I will look forward to seeing y'all very, very soon. Bye.